Out front now, Democratic Congresswoman Karen Bass of California. She is the lead police reform negotiator for House Democrats. And Congresswoman Bass, I appreciate your time tonight. I know that this has been uh, the work of months. You've been talking uh, to your fellow negotiators. Two deadlines for a deal have been missed, but you've still been working. August recess now looming in just days. Is a police reform deal in serious jeopardy of dying? I don't think it's in serious jeopardy, but of course I'm concerned about it because we're going on break. As you know, the House goes on break tomorrow, but the Senate will be in next week. And I know that my colleagues in the Senate have been meeting on a daily basis. I know I uh, hopefully will see Senator Scott tomorrow, saw Senator Booker yesterday. So the work goes on. Of course I am frustrated. I wish this would have happened a long time ago, but until the two senators say, it is over. It is not over. And you know how long, you know that we can negotiate and talk about legislation for a long time before it actually occurs. Yes, no, it's definitely true. Now, you mentioned uh, Senator Tim Scott, the chief Republican negotiator. Uh, he would talk to our own Manu Raju last week about the potential for a deal and said, quote, if we're having the same conversations next week, then it's dead. Okay, that was a week ago. You're telling me you just spoke with him yesterday. Has the conversation changed, the conversation that you had with the senator? Yes, the conversation is changing, and the way I can describe it without going into details is, is that when you are negotiating something, it's important that you reach a conclusion. Considering the bill, even though the focus was only on one part of the bill, the bill is quite complex with about 15 to 20 different pieces. And so you go through each of those pieces and work your way to a point where you agree. So I don't believe that the conversation is the same this week as it was last week. Well, that's a, a hopefully, hopefully a good sign. Um, look, I know a major sticking point continues to be qualified immunity, and this has been around, you know, a big part of this since the beginning. But basically, it's the federal doctrine that makes it hard to sue police officers, you know, individually uh, you know, for wrongdoing. Senator Scott says eliminating for individual officers cannot be on the table. He's been calling that a poisoning bill. You have said that eliminating it is essential. So that would seem to be two positions that are diametrically opposed. Do you have potential compromise on this? I do think there is. And let me just tell you that the primary concern that I have is with accountability. Because I want to stop seeing people brutalized and killed, period. An average of three people a day are involved in in encounters with police that result in their death. That's over a thousand people a year. So that's what I want to see stopped. And I think one way to stop it is for officers to be held accountable. But I also think there's a lot of other things that we can do that will stop the brutalization and killing of people. So one bipartisan deal that has been struck in the Senate um, is the roughly $1 trillion infrastructure package. Now, Democrats in the House actually have had all sorts of objections with it. Here are two of them. I think it's inadequate um, on, on many levels. I definitely can't support in and of itself. Now, this was written by three people who have no knowledge of or expertise in transportation infrastructure. I think it needs to be substantially changed. Okay, so, uh, and, and that's just, there's more where that came from. I mean, how hard is it going to be to get this agreement through the House, Congresswoman, with such a slim Democratic majority? Well, I think it is going to be a challenge, and I think that we're going to need Republican votes. But, you know, really and truly, on the infrastructure piece, we have to see everything that's in the bill. Remember, the main thing that happened is that they had a vote to begin a debate. Yes. We know yes. that they came up with an agreement, but I don't believe, now maybe I'm just speaking for myself, that uh, the members have seen bill language. Now, I know our chair... Uh, Peter DeFazio, of course, has been way more involved, but I don't know that they have shared bill language. And until you can actually see what is written, it's easy to make agree agreements verbally. But we need to see the bill language. And any time the bill moves from one house to the next, you know that significant change takes place. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time, Congresswoman. You're welcome.